today's video, we're going to take a look at adding waterfalls and splashes to our scene. Now, I have a little bit of a story to tell about this topic. Uh, I'm not very good at creating particle effects, uh, especially in uh, Unreal. I don't have any experience with that at all. So when I started making this scene, I knew that I was going to need to create uh, some waterfalls and some particle effects to fill in these gaps here. You can see that I've got water planes and they're flat, but they're also tiered. So I need effects that uh, fill in these gaps and kind of create a white water effect with some uh, some foam and some wakes and some splashes. And I also knew I had no experience creating particle effects in Niagara and that sort of thing. And so the first thing I thought of was, well, maybe I'll just go to the Unreal Marketplace and take a look at what's available there. And so if we open up Unreal Marketplace, I did a search for waterfalls here. And you can see the, the, the result that came up that I really liked was this one here. And it's by T. Harl VFX. And I was like, wait a second, I recognize that name. And so I thought, well, wait, this is the same guy that has this amazing YouTube channel. And so I went over to YouTube and, and sure enough, here's uh, Tom Harl's uh, VFX YouTube channel where he's got all of these amazing in-depth videos where he talks about shaders and uh, Niagara particle effects and and this is amazing. So <laughs> you guys should pause this video right now and go subscribe to uh, Tom's channel, T. Harl VFX, uh, because he's great and these videos would be super helpful. And actually, so I reached out to Tom. Uh, my first thought was that I could just buy his, uh, his VFX package and add them to my scene. But then I thought, man, wouldn't it be more useful if I got Tom to do a collaboration with me and we work together to build these effects. And then on his channel, what he decided he wanted to do is uh, create some, some videos where he describes the process of actually making these effects and shows you guys how to do that. So you have the option of, of purchasing his, uh, his waterfall effects package or you can wait until uh, the beginning of the year and he's gonna start a new series of videos on his channel where he walks us through uh, how's the, how these effects were made. So anyway, I reached out to him and he said, sure, I would be happy to help you out, Ben. Uh, and he spent a couple of uh, days putting together some uh, waterfall meshes and particle effects that we can put into our scene uh, to fill in the gaps between the water and they look fantastic man tom came through in a big way so let's switch over to unreal and i'll show you what i mean all right here we are back in unreal and i want to show you the assets that tom created for our scene so you can see we have this new folder here called t harl vfx water effects and inside that we have meshes and also particles there are seven mesh assets here and i want to just take you through and show you each of them the first and probably the most important one is this asset here uh, called Waterfall Base Mesh, which is just one long waterfall that I can use to cross the boundary where a tear drops down uh, in between uh, the top water plane and the, and the bottom water plane. The really nice thing about this mesh is that it's laid out with a pivot so that uh, if I have uh, various sizes of waterfalls, I can very easily scale them. So if I pick this guy and stretch it, I can scale it smaller or uh, larger depending on how high my waterfall is. So what I'm going to do when I place these is just place this top pivot point where I want it to go and then scale it so that the bottom portion of the waterfall uh, meets the tier of water below really useful to set up the asset that way. All right, next I have this little uh, mesh over here that's just a small waterfall. And this is useful for uh, placing uh, kind of as a helper to the larger waterfall mesh if I want to have areas where water is flowing around rocks and you know flowing one direction on one side of the rock and a different direction on the other side of the rock. So. Pretty cool little mesh here uh, to kind of break up 
this larger uh, waterfall mesh I have here. So this one is just like one long straight asset. But if I want it to look like the water is flowing around and in various directions, I can use this little asset here. All right, the next one here, I've got one asset with the waterfall bending to the left or the water flow bending to the left and another to the right. And this is useful if if I were to have like a large rock here in the middle between these two, I could redirect my water easily with these two meshes so that water flows around the rock one way and the other way. So pretty cool there. And now I also have two additional smaller waterfall meshes. And whereas the one over here is just a straight piece of geometry, these two meshes have a little bit of cross hatching. So it's a little bit less obvious that uh, they're just uh, geometry. Um, so they have these nice uh, crossed uh, mesh orientation. So one this way and then one that way. And then here's one with just uh, regular water flowing. And the thing that I like about this one is that it has this really nice uh, wobbly wavy pattern. And so if I want to look, make the water look a little bit more turbulent in specific areas, I can do that. So pretty cool. All right, so I have uh, seven water meshes with really neat animated materials on them. And then I also have four Niagara particle systems. Starting over here on the left, I have a waterfall particle system. And the nice thing about this one is that it flows in different directions depending on which particle is spawned. You can see by this orange outline uh, that when particles spawn, they have uh, slightly uh, random orientations and so it kind of changes the way that the water is flowing. The geometry meshes are consistent and the water is always flowing in the same direction and spot but here there's a little bit of randomness to it. Next I have this uh, foam and this is really great if I have a splash uh, here at the back of the foam I can lay this down after the splash to show that the Water has been churned up and the bubbles in the foam are flowing downstream with it. And next I have another similar effect, but instead of the water flowing straight in one direction, it's kind of fanning out in all directions. So I have kind of two different variations of this foam effect. And finally, I have this nice little splash effect here, uh, which is really useful for when the water falls off the waterfall uh, like if I were to put this splash effect uh, right here, for example, it just makes the waterfall look that much more realistic to have uh, the water cascading down the side and then splashing it into itself at the bottom. So you can see how I might put this together. I have the waterfall, the water's coming down here, I have a splash effect here, and then I have foam here. So I can put the foam trailing off like this. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend a little bit of time and I'm going to go through and apply these effects to our scene. And then I'll come back and show you what I've done. All right, so I've been working for uh, just a little while and I've managed to put all of the um, waterfall meshes into the scene. And I'm really loving the way that this is uh, looking and, and what it's contributing. So I wanted to kind of pause here and show you guys what I've done. So here's one of the waterfall meshes and you can see how much more realistic it looks. So let's go ahead and take our mannequin and we'll uh, go for a run and check out what I've done so far. You can see I haven't added any of the splashes or the foam effects in yet. I've only added the waterfall meshes, uh, but let's take a look pretty neat so no longer do we have the water tiered with a, a big gap in between but we've got this really cool looking uh, waterfall mesh now you can see that the mesh is pretty linear and straight and I'm gonna need to break it up a little bit with some additional uh, pieces of geometry to make the waterfall flow in different directions but uh, for now this is looking pretty good and and I really like the progress so I wanted to show you guys so you can see that I've added these meshes all the way up uh, my river. So everywhere where I used to have a gap, 
uh, between two levels of the, the water mesh. Now I have the, the nice connecting mesh uh, with a really beautiful looking waterfall that uh, Tom Harl created. So uh, he did just a great job and, and really enjoying adding these assets to the scene. Well, all right, I'm going to sign off again and I'll get back to you guys in a minute. All right, so I've added splashes and foam to one of my waterfalls and I just wanted to show you guys. So you can see that uh, whereas before I only had the flowing water going over the falls, now I have this uh, really nice looking foam. At the base of the fall, I have the splashes where the water is impacting itself. And then flowing away from the falls, I have this foam coming off, which, which looks really nice. Uh, and then if we swing around behind, you can see that I've uh, added this uh, foam in the water here where the water is impacting these smaller rocks and then here where it's hitting the bigger rock I have a nice little splash particle effect and I'm really enjoying uh, this work and, and adding these particles that Tom created uh, so this is what it's looking like now and if I turn it off um, this is what it looked like before today's video uh, I just had the water planes in um, but no waterfalls or or splash effects. So this is just breathing a ton of life into the scene and I'm really enjoying it. All right, I'm gonna get back to work and I'll show you guys some more in a minute. At this rate, I think I could probably work with this stuff all day. <laughs> I've just been having a lot of fun uh, adding splashes and foam and, and particles to the water. It's really great. So got some splashes here some foam coming off the rocks uh, a little bit of splashes here now some of the waterfalls are significantly shallower than others and on those I've tried to um, to not do too many splashes like this one could probably use some foam in the water underneath it uh, but I don't want to go too crazy with effects especially where the the waterfall is really shallow so we just continue on up here. You can see that I've added all kinds of effects all the way up the stream. And let's take our mannequin for a run and, and see what the scene is looking like. So I put some extra love into this waterfall. I don't know if you can see it, but I made the water flow in different directions around this rock. And continuing on up the stream here, we've got really nice foam and splash particles and I really enjoyed putting these together I'll probably spend another hour or two today and uh, continue tweaking this and in the uh, the next time we take a look at these they'll they'll probably look even better just because I spent some extra time now I'm not gonna lie it is it is quite a quite a big job to add these by hand and to place and rotate all of them and so it might be might be worth it to look into a solution that would automatically add these. Um, but mostly the focus of this tutorial series is creating something that's handcrafted. If you guys have noticed, uh, like I handcrafted uh, the painting of the height map and the painting of the material layers and placing all the objects. I didn't do anything procedural. I've been uh, working to, to handcraft all these things and and the uh, splashes and foam are no exception. So I want to take a minute and thank Tom Harl for his great work that he did on these effects. And I want to encourage you guys to go subscribe to his channel because he will be uh, putting together a series of tutorial videos, like I said, starting in the new year where he goes through and talks about uh, how to use Niagara and how to create uh, the various effects that I've been applying in the scene. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you did, and be sure to check back next week for more uh, world-building goodness. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week, everybody.